what a beautiful day. It's too hot, but it's beautiful. Going with casual comfort today, rather than, I normally wear like a polo shirt on dress down Fridays, but I want to be comfortable because it's so warm. And in the office, it's really warm as well. The aircon isn't great, but that's not bothering me to me, ladies and gentlemen, because it's Friday. Just found out, by the way, <laughs> really niche, that uh, Roslyn, the support for uh, workspaces in Roslyn has been pushed back and has been, uh, the milestone's been moved out of um, Donet Core 2.0. No! Which is insanely irritating. Oh, God damn it. I was hoping I'd be able to use that at some point soon. That was one of the things I tried to implement in and hit the roadblock of it not being supported. <laughs> Otherwise though, I'm gonna finish off our proxy um, middleware today. And I think we've got meetings this afternoon because it's the end of the sprint. Uh, technically Monday, but it's bank holiday. I've got keys again, ladies and gentlemen. It means I can start leaving things at work and I don't have to carry everything around with me, which means I don't have to bring this big bag, which means I can cycle. So I'd like to point out that it's about three billion degrees right now. It's way too hot. So I definitely wouldn't be cycling. Yeah, it means that I can leave my laptop at work. I can leave my glasses at work. My Lord, it's hot, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, hey Google, is it hot outside? No, it's not hot in Bristol. It's 26 degrees Celsius. What? what settings are you on? 26 degrees is ridiculous. Literally the hottest day of the year so far, Google. What are you talking about? Either way, today we got, even though we had lots of meetings, we got the gateway up and running. Um, we have a proof of concept. We're just going through trying to make it nice and tidy and nice and clean. Um, otherwise, we are waiting for Laura to come home. We're going to have some fajitas. Fa -fa -da 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 Tequila. Uh, but... Anyway, um, I believe we're also planning a shopping trip because we need to get some food for tomorrow and we need to get some bacon malarkey. I'm gonna have to be careful when I edit this video because I'm just, I can't speak. I'm too warm to concentrate on words. I'm serious though, I'm not convinced how people can work in this kind of heat. Also to make it worse, the window's open because it's hot and the fan in the lake's on. That's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, like it's quarter to 12 and we're wanting to go to bed, but like, Want to go to bed, but don't want to go to sleep because it's too hot. It's too hot to go to bed. Um, but yeah, either way, we're cool now because uh, we've got ourselves a nice food cooler. Going on an adventure tomorrow. We need to take a little, a little cool bag for our little snackies. Um, so it's pretty gonna, gonna be dope. And meanwhile, I'm gonna get ready for bed and uh, try and wake Laura up come away for the day. It's supposed to be sunny today. No, it's actually quite grey and quite miserable, <laughs> but we're gonna go paddle boarding. I'd love to be able to film it, but I actually don't have a GoPro or anything waterproof, so I can't. We're just kind of waiting before we go in to get our, let me find a shelter from the wind. We're just trying to, we're about to go in and like get changed and whatnot. We brought swim stuff, um, but we've bottled it last minute um, and everyone else ordered a wetsuit. So I had to order a wetsuit as well. because I don't want to be the odd one out, you know? Really, I, I'm lad enough to not need a wetsuit, you know? Yeah, so we are just around the corner, having a bit of lunch, and then we're gonna go and have an induction, I think. We're gonna get changed, obviously. You know what? That was really, really good fun. Like, it seems weird. Paddle boarding is where you, like, stand on a really big surfboard. You just kind of, like, row it. It sounds like it wouldn't be very fun, because <laughs> it just sounds like you stood on, like, a wooden plank, essentially, floating in a lake. But it was really, really good. Like, um... Firstly, we, me and uh, Ben decided not to go wetsuits. Um, we just yolo'd in. Um, ben, <laughs> ben fell in like eight times as he was trying to steer and stuff. Um, and then I fell in once because Ben literally careered into me at a million miles an hour. And then he hit me from behind and I just went like, Phew. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was just like, just like rowing about. Like I definitely fully recommend that. We had a jolly good fun time. And although it was looked cold, the water was like bizarrely warm. It's ever so strange, it's up in the Cotswolds. Really good fun. I would recommend that to people who like that kind of thing. Um, I had an inkling to go kayaking, but no one else was interested. Um, kayaking, to be fair, probably is less fun because there is like the added thing of like, you can like kneel and get some speed on, or you could like stand up and then you got to like balance and stuff. It was really good fun. Genuinely, like we'll probably do it again um, and whatnot. Although, I need a waterproof camera for that. It's not worth buying a waterproof camera, don't do it. So what was quite strange, after falling in, was like being in a big body of water that wasn't salt water. So like we got out of it and like toweled ourselves down and whatnot. And like it didn't smell like chlorine, it didn't smell like salt. 
and that's really strange because it just smells like drinking water. Uh, that's like a weird, really weird thing. Like uh, the towels and stuff that were wet, they just smelled like they'd just come out of like a shower or something. A bit weird. Um, otherwise, it's like a three million degrees. Thankfully, the fan is not on. Um, but there is like a weird festival um, going on down the road. So, if you listen to that, I don't know if you could hear that, but there is some music playing. We're officially like old fogey. It's like, oh, it's so nice. It's not noisy. It's actually quite a long way away. It just seems to be like the wind's blowing this way, so you pick it up. Um, but yeah, it's like some kind of festival thing. It's just damp road from us. Well, so it's quite a long way away. It's just be, must be bloody loud for people who are nearby. Hey. Hello. Hey. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Sunday, and I'm finally getting round to sorting out last night, uh, last week's video. And we are currently waiting for Beth and Ben to come around because we're going to have a lovely takeaway. Why though today we had a bit of a lie-in. Um, I don't know what we've been doing recently, but we've been sleeping in longer than we're supposed to be. Um, well, we only really had time today. We went out on a bike ride, <clears throat> just like essentially up the path and went a different way than we've normally been. Had a bit of an explore, a ruined, which was jolly good fun. Um, and then we came back for lunch, sorted out all of our Sunday jobs. It's bank holiday tomorrow, so we've got the day off, and we're trying to clear our day up so that we don't have to do like Sunday chores on a Sunday. So we've already done like the ironing, we've done ground, we've done the washing, all of that malarkey. Um, and that's about that. I sorted out this video and spent a bit of time planning how I'm going to be representing the results of my program. Um, I've decided that the internal way that the results are generated is wrong um, and it should be done in a slightly different manner in order to optimise it a little bit. I've raised a user story for that. Um, and otherwise I have gone through and figured out how best to display the results to a human uh, and it's not going to be fun. I'm going to be pulling data from like four different objects all at once. Um, so yeah, I basically have a big list of things based on what type of result it is um, and there could be more or less four of them need to be conjoined into one object and then I have a one-to-one -one ratio between those things, those four things mapped to singular items on that thing. It's going to be a mess. To the point where it's not going to be a fun mess either. Um, I'm not particularly looking forward to diving through it all. Um, but can't get into it now because guests are on route. You know what, hopefully one day we'll plan to have pancakes for breakfast. Remember that to make pancakes you need eggs. I swear this is like the second time I've had to do this. I honestly can't picture life now without Android Pay. Right then, let's go get some breakfast boys! Let us go! Hey guys, in Sainsbury's though, they do a coconut that already has a hole in so you can just drink from it. There's a straw! That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. That's how much extra you're paying for the privilege though, so. Have you guys ever eaten a peeled grape before? Because if not, you should. Thankfully we managed to clear off all of the jobs that we were supposed to do on a Sunday. On a Sunday, so our bank holiday Monday was actually really nice and chilled out. We didn't do anything. We had pancakes for breakfast. Um, we went shopping, that was the only thing we did. Went to Sainsbury's to do our normal Monday shop. Otherwise just had a chilled, chilled day. I've done like little bits of programming here and there. Uh, building up the uh, objects that are going to be storing information about the actual objects that have results in them um, rather than just like kind of generic general process information it's going to be like drilled in information about each individual thing that's happening um, yes I've pottered around with that a little bit um, I've also been looking for a way of kind of keeping notes of stuff that's going on I use Keep at the moment for um, like general, like literally shopping lists, <laughs> nine times out of ten. But um, I'm looking for kind of like a, a note app to use, um, and I'm thinking of using OneNote again to kind of like just keep log of all the things that are going on. Um, so like things that I'm learning at work and all that kind of stuff. I used to work with someone who had like a mind map, and he basically put like everything he learned on it, and he'd be able to dive to this mind map, um, this digital mind map thing. And to be able to look into like, oh, we've seen that problem before. Oh, there's some on my map somewhere. And figure it out. Um, and I thought that was really cool. And I basically get to the point where I'm like, I need to keep note of this. I need to keep note of this. I need to keep track of that. And OneNote's really good for like categorizing things by like university and stuff. But yeah, I need things like along the lines of like things for my project, the different frameworks I'm learning for work, different things I'm thinking about, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then more generally, like things here, we're planning 
holidays and stuff um, for next year because um, we're thinking about going big or going home next year. If you've got any recommendations, guys, I'd be, I'd love to hear them. I'm not a fan of Evernote, but I like OneNote, but it's, I think it's a bit heavy, and I'm not a fan of Evernote. Any other good ones? Ho, hi ho. It's Tuesday again, ladies and gentlemen, and woke up this morning, and my alarm properly shit me up. <laughs> been sleeping without an alarm for the past few days, and it went off, and I was like, "Fuck in hell." Get me out a little bit. Also, probably a good day to bring an umbrella. Um, it's raining. Yolo. Um, just get a little bit wet on my way into work today. You know what? I'm just driving in as well, and there was like no cars behind me. And I became acutely aware of the fact that there were zero cars following me. And I'm normally in like lines of traffic and stuff until I hit like the main ring road and whatnot. It's quite strange. So, but yeah, we're back to work. Four day week. Just got to power on through. I think we're starting the sprint today as well. So, mostly planning. Although I've got some uh, refactoring and testing to do with the API gateway, the new API gateway. That should do me for the summer. One of these days though, I'm gonna walk out without a wallet and they're not gonna accept contactless, which almost happened when I tried to buy petrol yesterday. Hey Bubba, it's House of Cards time yeah. and I don't see you controlling the casting. Why are you showing me to Okay. Hey Google, play House of Cards on the TV. <laughs> okay, House of Cards from Netflix. Playing on the TV. You better fucking believe it, girlfriend. No, oh, what's this? Episode one, Bubba, season five. Whee! House of Cards is some top quality TV. And like, out of all Netflix originals, it's gonna be the one. You know, it's gonna be the flagship. Otherwise, though, we've had a great day today. I've been churning through some code. We had planning, um, sprint planning, um, and I've been churning through uh, the last of the code to refactor our API gateway into some uh, ASP.NET middleware, which is nice. It's all nice and clean and OOE and tested and all that malarkey. It's an extensible and I flew through it all as well. I'm doing pretty well. Um, I have a feeling that, that they want to get it pushed out quickly so someone's going to like bodge the last little bit and it's going to break my little heart. Um, but I have a feeling it's going to be all done by the time I get it tomorrow. But um, yeah, it's on a story. Well, it's it wasn't on a story. Um, We've kind of like attached it to a story it wasn't on previously just to push it through testing. Um, and this story needs to go through testing like now. Um, so like I said, it's the beginning of a sprint and we've got a story for testing. That's why. <laughs> yeah, so that's going well. I've had a late night programming and I should go to sleep. I get a lie in tomorrow though. It's Wednesday tomorrow, so I get a lie. Well, not a lie in early night. I mean, flew into the park and ride again. Turns out it's um, half term. So, kids aren't at school, which means there's no cars on the road, basically. I have a really bad habit of like having to triple check that I've locked the car. I never used to do that, but like over the past month or so, I've been developing it. The lack of school kids is basically meaning that I'm getting to work like 15 minutes early. It's almost like I'm going to my other park and ride, which, God damn it! please open soon. Turns out my park and ride road is gonna be closed until the 20th of June, well hey. Otherwise though, today's been pretty good nailed the uh, gateway. I managed to do it all today. It wasn't done for me last night, which was good. Um, and we've been trying to get it running in dev, um, but we've got, we seem like infrastructure issues or firewall, firewall issues. Something's not quite sitting right and I can't get it working. So it seems to be doing what it wants to be doing, but when it's trying to call the service it's acting as a gateway for, it's failing there. So but it seems to be calling it how I expect it would call. I've just put it in again to see if I can get some more uh, login information. I'm not a massive fan of uh, infrastructure style issues. Home and Atlas is updating. I've had the update on my Surface yet, which is annoying. Also, as I got out of the car and walked to the, uh, to the building, some guy got out of a, a van with my delivery of shirts. I was like, yo, is that for a... Uh, Flat X, and he's like, yeah, sure, and then hands it over to me and then goes, wait, what's your last name? <laughs> so I've ordered um, five new white shirts uh, to wear for work because um, my ones, I feel, are too small. I feel like they're a bit too tight and they're not very comfortable because of that reason, basically. So I did the logical thing and I went back to Topman, which is where I ordered it from, 
and ordered the same style again. Um, but I bought two different times. One of them was like in their premium range. It's like the uh, Egyptian cotton one. I bought four of them because they had four left. Um, in a size up from my previous shirt. Um, and they're huge. Like they feel lovely. <laughs> I'm sure they're very nice shirts. They're also half price as well, which is why I bought them. Um, they feel lovely, but they're massive. They are literally massive. Like, they're ridiculously big compared to the other ones that I have. And the other one is basically the same style as the one that I otherwise currently have, but a size up. And that's really big as well. And I don't know how, between literally one size is way too small. Well, it doesn't, well it's not way too small. It just needs to be a tiny little bit bigger. And the other one is literally like plumy. Like, it plumes. And I know I'm the kind of person who likes kind of like skin tight clothes. Like I don't wear baggy clothes. I don't like baggy clothes. But they're really baggy. Like they puff up baggy. Where do people buy shirts from is what I'm asking. Guys, it's a standard Wednesday. I am working. Um, and Laura is out. She's gone to go and do some um, netballing. Like an absolute babe. And we had a very productive programming session. I actually had more time logged to uh, programming uh, on my own project today than I did at any tasks that I'm doing at work because I was all logged to deployments and like troubleshooting and meetings and stuff. I even watched the uh, thingy debate which was uh, fun to watch, uh, not in any way shape or form useful or interesting. Um, yeah, it's just basically who can shout the loudest, essentially. Something that's always confused me is why the Welsh and Scottish parties get to talk at those debates. Because essentially all that does is it airs their opinions and their policies, which essentially don't affect the UK voting public um, on a much wider category, on like a much wider audience, than it does the people that they're actually competing against. Like, all there should be is there should be a England... England Westminster politics, where you have your own opinions and you can have your own stuff, which are all like uh, Labour, Conservative, Lib Dem, uh, UKIP, Green... Must we even need a Those people. And then there should be a Welsh one, where Welsh party go against Welsh Labour, Welsh Conservative, because Welsh Conservative, well, in it, specifically in places like, um, no, yeah, Welsh Labour is completely different to UK Labour. Like, they're in control there, and they're not doing any of the shit that they're saying they do here. It's completely different policy. It's like a general theme, but there isn't the same policy match, because that's not just not the case. Um, so there should also be one where the SNP debate against um, Scottish Conservatives and Scottish Labour and Scottish Lib Dem because that's, that just makes sense. As a Scottish person, I'd be like, why am I watching this TV programme where there's like seven people that I can't vote, well, no, seven, out of the seven people I can only vote for one of them. Why can't I have a TV programme? Maybe there is one actually in their place, but either way, why, why can't I have a TV programme which has all of the people who are having a say in the area that I live in? Although, and even if, even if there is that other programme, all this does is it further publicises. It's unfair on the people that they're competing against, because it essentially gives that party two attempts at getting out in front of voters. I just think that's a strange, strange thing to have. I can't vote for Scottish or Welsh people, or the Welsh party, so why are they there? Right. Early night, and I need to sleep on what it is I'm going to be doing with these shirts. It's finally Easter egg time, boys. Just noticed that I didn't vlog at all today. I could have sworn, I could genuinely, I could have sworn I vlogged on the way into work and on the way out again. And I seem to have completely blipped that. We had a bit of a good day today, kinda. Um, we had a load of infrastructure issues, getting a story through to development so that we can get it tested. Um, and we, well, yeah. So that was a problem. We also did a bit of refactoring because we had some issues with some retry policies for our API gateway. And I also spent three hours, I shit you not, three hours, <laughs> um, getting, uh, changing the colour of um, some hyperlinks in an email footer and the colour of the title 
uh, in the um, in like the the title of the email, um, not like the subject line, like the form. Like it's it's one of them ones where um, Outlook Web, uh, the Outlook, um, it's called OWA. I don't know what the uh, the A is. Uh, the Outlook Web Access app. If you go to Outlook.co.uk and like have a look at your email on there. The way that it renders your HTML and CSS is completely different to how every other email system works. So, so like for example, a quirk is it makes intelligent intelligent decisions based on whether or not you've chosen to put white, right? If you've selected to have a piece of text as white, it will decide whether or not it's going to do white. You have no control over that. If it determines that white isn't the best pick color, it will go back to the default, which is often black or in hyperlink terms, blue. But to get around that, you go... So white is like FFFFFFFFF in hexadecimal. <laughs> it's only six Fs. But in uh, if you want it to actually do white and force it to do white, you have to go FFFFFFFE. <laughs> what the fuck? So what it does is it strips out... So if you have a link with the colour in, it strips out the link puts the colour on the thing above the link and then has the link inside it so you have to like, it's, you have to hack the shit out of it, it's not good fun um, but yeah, so I had that, we had joys there and then I had issues just fucking typos getting it up which is why it took the rest of the time but yeah, so <laughs> that was a party in the park um, but otherwise it's been a pretty good day I'm actually going to bring the vlog to an end now because I feel like it's a natural stopping point I don't want them to every vlog to be ridiculously long all the time. Uh, this evening we have just kind of chilled out. Laura um, fell asleep. I did a quiz um, to do like um, voting, uh, vote on the policies, what's it called? I tweeted it out, check my Twitter. Um, it's along the lines of vote by policy. And what it does is it basically generates topics where you request topics that you want to uh, select policies on and then it shows you randomly five different parties, well, the five major parties' policies on that topic um, in your area. And then you can basically select which policies you agree with without looking at your party um, biases, which is really interesting. Um, well, it is it like, for people who don't read manifestos, or don't at least, I, I'm not gonna pretend I've read all the manifestos, I've looked at like the detailed um, kind of like highlights of the manifestos and then any point where I'm like, oh, what's that about? So I read the, basically the detailed like analysis of all of the manifestos, the major three in a way. Um, and places where I thought that that detailed analysis was a bit biased, I then, or I wanted more information, I then jumped into the manifesto. For example, I looked into what the Conservatives were saying about um, their opinions on the internet. And I'm like, mm, well, don't agree with that. That's something in particular where I had to go to the manifesto in order to actually see what they're saying rather than reading what someone else's opinion of what that is. Well, not opinion, but their summary, because often summaries can be very easily turned into a bias. Anyway, um, yeah, so it was quite easy for me to recognize who's is who's. But I was very interested um, to see how some other people voted because um, I know someone who is very, very pro Corbyn, in particular Corbyn, specifically said Corbyn, not Labour, um, very pro Corbyn and like is adamant that Corbyn's the man, okay, that's who we're going to vote for. They did this quiz and they got zero of Labour policies. They like out of the topics they picked, they got zero of Labour policies. And the one that they vehemently hate, um, the Conservatives, they picked um, on the basis of their NHS, <laughs> which is quite funny if you ask me. Yeah, that was good fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's very easy to fall into a bubble online. It's very easy to look at what everyone else is saying. For example, yesterday on the debate, uh, which I think I told you about yesterday, uh, they did a big debate where like the six party leaders or seven party leaders, with the exception of Theresa May, who couldn't be bothered, and uh, the SNP person who sent their deputy instead, they had a debate debate where they all shouted at each other and slung mud at each other, whatever. Um, but, like, the way that the media, and social media particularly, but like the way that the media can kind of spin things is like usually quite obvious, but literally on stage, the UKIP guy would say something, the other six, literally all six of them, mm, maybe not the Conservatives, but probably, I can't remember now, all of them then attacked whatever UKIP just said, 
based on the fact that they're victim, they're um, what's the word? That they're, they're demonising immigrants. At no point did the UKIP guy, uh, not all, um, at no point did he demonise immigrants, immigrants or immigration in any way, shape, or form. But the others know that that's like a thing that people think about UKIP, so they say it. And news people know that this is a thing that people think about this place and they say it. And people assume that a party will have an opinion, and then therefore just argue against the opinion that they are assuming that they have, even though they don't necessarily have that opinion. And that's why I find things like that quiz really interesting. Because of instances where people think that UKIP specifically just demonise immigrants, which I mean, some pe some of you obviously some parties of everything, whatever. But like people like Farage did, <laughs> but um, like every opinion, like every time that they attacked him for doing it, he didn't do it in the first place. He was literally saying that we. Uh, what was it? I'm not going to get into the specifics of it, but yeah. I fully recommend that you do a quiz like that. Maybe just like a quiz where it goes down and says like, on your opinion on this, like, do you strongly or disagree? Strongly disagree, blah blah blah. And it kind of plots you on a um, political spectrum. Um, they're really interesting. Um, although, there's a level of like, okay, so I'm there, so you're telling me to vote for them, but that doesn't necessarily marry up to what's actually happening. Um, but anyway, I recommend, for those of you who are voting, um, that you at least have attempts to look at what other people's policies are before you vote. Because you may not actually be voting for what you think you're voting for. Um, for example, there's like a lot of people uh, that are a lot more Lib Dem than they think they are. They think that they're either Labour or Conservative, but actually they're very Lib Dem, um, etc. Anyway, that's by the way. Otherwise, just watched uh, Question Time on BBC Question Time. It's a Thursday. Got to love it. Um, and that was way better than the debate yesterday. <laughs> way better. It was just like people having good questions, good answers, whether you agree with them or not. It was just, oh, God damn it. I really like politics, if you haven't seen. Anyway, uh, what else is going on in my life, apart from politics? Uh, we have some like relative turmoil going on in the background, um, which we'll cover in other daily vlogs. Um, some stuff, some exciting stuff's coming up, which I can't particularly tell you about, but it's uh, next week-ish, um, at some point next week. Um, some exciting stuff's coming up, uh, but there's a bit of turmoil about like what that specific thing is, how it's gonna go, what yeah, what it is, when it is, everything about it's basically up in the air. So we did a bit of planning around that this evening as well. And that's about that. I guess I'll thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll probably see you again uh, over this weekend. I think we've got some stuff planned, so there'll be lots to vlog about. Yeah, I totally recommend that you do one of those, like, vote by policy. I think it's votebypolicy.org or something. Um, do something like that and actually have a look, and you'll see how similar everyone is. Obviously, there's a level of... Um, how trustworthy a party is of actually doing their manifesto um, but that's a bit above and beyond um, yeah so anyway that's me thank you very much for watching this video ladies and gentlemen I hope you've enjoyed it um, I hope you're enjoying your politics as much as I am I'm gonna go to bed because tomorrow it's a